So from 23rd of March 2024, two major changes have come into effect for international students in Australia. And we had to reshoot this whole video because there were so many new updates in these changes. In this video, we will talk about both these changes and all the other important details that you need to know. Make sure to stick around till the end if you want to know about these details. Now the first major change is in regards to the GTE statement. GTE statement will be replaced by GS requirements. This new change will come into effect from the 23rd of March 2024. So GTE known as Genuine Temporary Entrant is going to be replaced by GS requirement which is Genuine Student Requirement. So anyone who is applying for visas on or after 23rd of March will need to apply with the new GS requirement. Anyone applied before that however does not need to apply with GS they could have done with a GTE requirement. So you might wonder what is the difference between the GDE or GS requirement? Obviously there are few differences between these two things but before we talk about the differences one important thing is the similarity between both these things and that is about students genuine intention to study in Australia. Over the last few months you would have heard about it that Australia just want genuine students to come here and study. So that is quite clear from both these requirements. However in the GS requirement they are intending to include students who after studying in Australia, getting the right skills that Australia need and then go on to apply for permanent residency. This was clearly not there in the GTE requirement where there was no acknowledgement regarding students studying in Australia, getting the right skills and then becoming the permanent resident of Australia. So now let's discuss about what is the new format of this GS requirement. So in the GTE statement, you were required to write a statement of around 300 words. That will be replaced by a set of targeted questions and you will need to answer those questions instead of writing a statement. And these questions will need to be answered in your online visa application. So it is going to be written answers. As some students were asking us whether it's going to be verbal or written, but on the Department of Home Affairs website, it clearly mentioned that these answers need to be given while completing your online student application. Now the maximum word limit is there for each question that will be 150 words. That's a quite significant change as well as in the past it was a total of 300 words for the whole statement. Now you can write up to 150 words for each question. That gives you a space to explain your things better. Now you might be also wondering what are the type of questions they are going to ask. Actually the questions they are going to ask in the new GS requirement is quite similar to the GTE requirement. So these are some of the questions they have mentioned on their website. So let's go through with them one by one. The first question is in regards to your current circumstances. That's where you will need to talk about your family ties back home, your ties with your local community back home, your circumstances in your current employment, especially if you're working, and your economic circumstances as well, which means how's your financial situation. Apart from that, you will also need to talk about your course, explaining the reason why you are choosing the course and why you are specifically choosing your education provider. As you know, there are multiple education providers in Australia and you can choose literally any one of them. So why this specific education provider and why this course? And you need to also explain about the intended course that you're going to do and studying and living in Australia as well. That will be your arrangements regarding your living and studying in Australia. That could include things like your accommodation and your financial stability. The next question is in regards to the course itself. What benefit does this course bring to the applicant? So how this course that you're planning to study is going to benefit your career, whether it will be a better job outcomes or better pay or any other reason how this course is going to help your career. Not if you are a student in Australia and want to apply for a new student visa, there are some additional question that will be about your study history in Australia what sort of course you have completed and if you were complying with your visa conditions when you were studying in Australia any other person who is holding any other visa than student visa and now want to apply for student visa must also give the reasons for their student visa application why do they want to change from their current visa to student visa what's the reason for this change and there will be option for applicants to provide any other additional information that they think is relevant that will help the visa officer to learn about the applicant and their genuine reasons to study in Australia. Now along with these questions you will 
have to also provide some additional information or documentation as well. Specifically speaking, the department would like to know information or documentation regarding these things, which are previous study overseas in your home country or in other country you have done, previous study in Australia, if you have completed any study in Australia, current employment, if you are currently working, details regarding that, your circumstances in your home country, that includes your family ties, your economic circumstances, and also the political situation of your country, potential situation in Australia, that is in regards to your living arrangements, your studies and other things, value of course to applicants future, which is what benefit this course will bring to the applicants future, any immigration history, especially if you have applied for any other visas for Australia or any other country, or if you have any visa cancellations or refusals, or any other important matter. Now on the same page, the Department of Home Affairs also mentions about how they are going to assess this new GS requirement. They have mentioned three main points that they will be looking into when they are assessing this new requirement. The first one will be the applicant's circumstances, which we have mentioned earlier regarding the family ties, the economic situations, and so on. Then the applicant's immigration history, if they have any, if you have visited other countries of got visa cancellations or refusals, or if you're currently studying in Australia, then your current visa history, then your immigration history in Australia, and compliance with the visa conditions for people who are already in Australia or any other relevant matter. Now, in a statement that was issued to the education provider, there was also an update regarding student visa declaration that is not given on the Department of Home Affairs current web page. In the document released to the education provider, it was mentioned that there will be amendments to student visa declaration as well that will ask students to confirm if they understand what it means to be genuinely studying in Australia. Then the students will need to read and commit to the student visa conditions. And if there is any change to the circumstances of the student they need to let the department of home affairs know as soon as possible and the declaration regarding the post-study pathways as well which says that the students needs to confirm that they understand that the post-study pathways to permanent migration are available only a limited number of graduates will be eligible and those who are unable to remain lawfully in australia must depart australia so the government do acknowledge that there is a possibility that some of the students could go on to become a permanent resident using the pathways available but not everyone will be eligible or able to apply as they are limited number of spots available. So if you can't live in Australia lawfully, you will need to depart Australia after the studies. So this was one of the major change that has come into effect from 23rd of March 2024. But there is another change that has been implemented from the same date as well, which is regarding the new English language requirements. So the government has updated the English language requirements for both student visa and temporary graduate visa holders from 23rd of March. For temporary graduate visa holders, the minimum IELTS scores or equivalent has increased from 6.0 to 6.5 with a minimum score of at least 5.5 in the each component of these tests. For those who don't know, there are four main components in these English tests that includes reading, writing, speaking and listening. And just to clarify, this is not just for IELTS, it's also for the PTE and any other relevant test that's acceptable here in Australia. So you need to score an equivalent of 6.5 in any of the English tests you're going to do and with a minimum score of 5.5. Also, they have reduced the test validity for temporary graduate visas from three years to one year, which means in the past, the students could have used their previous IELTS or PTE scores to reapply for these temporary graduate visas now it seems to have become next to impossible as they have reduced their validity only to one year and it's very difficult for most of the students to finish their degree in one year and get everything sorted within a year so most of the students would have to retake the english test when they're applying for their temporary graduate visa now the scores requirement for the student visa have also increased so it is increasing from 5.5 to 6.0 as a minimum score although they don't talk about any minimum score in each of the components. Just an overall score of 6.0 is enough. Students who are going to do packaged LE course courses, so some students do LE course courses and they also have another course like a diploma, a certificate and so on. Their minimum score is also increasing from 4.5 to 5.0. However, if you are just studying LE course course by itself, there is no change for that. So you can still come up with 4.5 as a minimum score. And also there is no change for the students who are going to do foundation program or pathway program for the university, which is still staying at same 5.5. 
So these were the couple of major changes that has come into effect from the 23rd of March 2024. I would love to hear your thoughts regarding this in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about these changes. Now if you want to know detailed information regarding the English language requirements, we've got a separate video on that already which we shot a couple of months back. So if you want to watch that video, make sure to check this video here. That's where I talk about these new English language requirements in a bit more detail. So click the link over there and I'll see you there.